Hey, yo guys, this is Jared, aka The Saint of Sins on Xbox Live, coming back at you Game Face Studio viewers with some MLB 2K12 online head-to-head -head gameplay against one of my subscribers, X Monkey Master X. Anyway, this was filmed sometime back in May, and I really lost track of it thanks in large part to jury duty and my recording of my NBA 2K12 My Player career. How I found this footage at all is beyond me, but trust me when I say Monkey Master and I went to war. You might already be blinded by the hideous jersey selection we both ran with. MM rolling with the Rainbow Bright jersey and me going with the Turd Burglar set. As a baseball fan, I can confidently claim these are the ugliest fucking things I have ever had the displeasure of bearing witness to. Yet fans of these franchises, and yes, they do still exist despite attendance records over the past 10 years, want to bring these monstrosities back full time. Didn't the 80s teach us that cocaine is one hell of a drug? Sure seemed to inspire the fuck out of the Lorios who decided that the Marlins didn't look flamboyant enough until this season. The other big note for this gameplay, I'm rolling with my favorite Padres pitcher of the season in Clayton Richard as he faces off against former Astros left-handed pitcher Wandy Rodriguez. But before we get any further into this gameplay, I have to lay out a few things. Firstly, this is something you should really expect more of from me, mostly on my channel. I like to roll with longer videos and the length of this video is a good indicator of the kind of average times you should expect to see from me. I feel as though that sometimes it's best to allow the gameplay to tell a narrative in the background of what it is I tend to speak about. Usually that narrative has setup and twists and turns. For instance, in this gameplay, there weren't a lot of strikeout highlights or big scoring plays. So to set up the story of how much of a battle this game was between Monkey Master and myself, I felt it would make for a better video to showcase all of the rallies we would start, because we would manage to get a lot of runners on and even move them into scoring position. The second thing you should know is that looping music in the background is something I typically use for my MLB Thoughts video series, an ill-fated idea of a series where I wanted to post a video every day of the baseball season talking about any and all topics of baseball while simultaneously giving out my predictions of every game played throughout the year. Given that I absolutely hate 2K Sports for laying this heaping turd of a game on my chest every year that they dare to call baseball, I've had a bit of an issue figuring out the format for that series moving forward. For next year, I want to do a better job of the MLB Thought series, and one improvement I can at least hope for is no more terrible Xbox 360 baseball games used as the background footage. Sadly, it's still unknown if we'll even get a baseball game on the 360 come March, as 2K has done the wise thing and decided to stop throwing money at the sinking ship. And thirdly, this video wasn't my first choice to air here on Game Face Studios. Initially, I had wanted to bring you guys another NBA 2K13 blacktop gameplay featuring my friends, the Skype Talkers, c 9590 and the Real Instant Classic. Whenever I roll with those guys, we typically communicate through Skype and it's sort of become my tool to do live commentaries, which I absolutely dread and despise almost as much as I hate this game franchise. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that just because Monkey Master took me yard with JD Martinez. That was mostly my fault. I've had a bit of an issue with this game trying to figure out what motions I'm possibly fucking up that keep floating my breaking ball pitches. For the life of me, I can't figure out why I can't drop my curveball on the corner it either floats up to the belt or drops into the dirt. There is no in-between for me. And that was never an issue in previous MLB 2K games. I didn't have to worry about all of my breaking stuff floating as I sit in the first and third jam with no outs. A quick visit from the pitching coach, um, manager, to calm my pitcher's composure down. After that mound visit, we roll into the 0-1 pitch to Bogusevic, who skies one to deep right field. Venable will field it cleanly as Carlos Lee tags up from third, but I'm still aiming to make this a tight play at home. The relay back to Hudson and I somehow get Carlos Lee out at the plate! Monkey Master and I laughed about this one for a bit as it looked like the game really gave me a break by stealing a run from him. What the hell even kind of animation is that anyway? God damn 2K and their weird fetish for animations that defy all logic of the sports world. Now, where was I? Oh right, the video I initially wanted to bring to you. So the live commentary feature my friends was a really odd one as we ended up running into one of the members of Money Team. I felt with how the gameplay was extremely exciting and the conversation being humorous, at least to myself, that it would make for a good showing here. 
that was until Wizen now saw it. He broke it down to me in the most honest way he could. That it wasn't a strong showing of my abilities as a commentator. And given that I'm not only the new guy here, but I'm also the smallest channel on the team, that I should be pushing myself more than featuring my friends in the commentaries. So with that advice under my belt, I kind of have an idea as to where the bar is set for me moving forward. Thankfully I had this gameplay already cut up. Otherwise, I might not have had anything ready for posting as quickly as I did. Now at the time of this game, Monkey Master might have been one of 120 or so subscribers watching my content and seemed to be an actual fan of my MLB Thought series. Though I may not remember much about him or what we talked about during this game, it was still cool to just sit back and play a game of baseball with someone that wasn't just outright exploiting the game's obvious flaws for the sake of winning the game and pissing me right the fuck off. We had tried to set up future games to play after this one, but those kind of fell through. Probably for the best, because me and this game just don't see eye to eye thanks in large part to its broken fielding mechanics. Thankfully, none of them reared their ugly head in this game. Though I do recall that play from earlier with Nick Hunley failing to run down Jed Lowry. I can't remember if that was me consciously trying not to give him a chase down to advance his runner to second, or if Hunley was caught in the glitch where he can no longer run during the length of the play. Either way, that may have been our only hiccup. Going into this matchup, I had an idea as to how this could play out, but much like my ability to pick the Tigers all season long, things ended up completely different from how I saw it. I figured I'd have more power going into this matchup, what with Headley, Hunley, and Alonzo, but none of these guys could get beyond the dimensions of the typically hitter-friendly field of Minute Maid Park. So I immediately started playing more small ball, when I noticed my hardest hit balls were dying at the wall. No point chasing hits that aren't producing runs. Whereas Monkey Master, well, he found a good power stroke for himself. Not just with the long ball, he was able to find gaps and punch runners over into first and third scenarios quite well. The only thing was, well, Richard was a brick wall. Don't get me wrong, Wandy was dealing his fair share, but as you saw from earlier, I was able to pull out of a first and third no out jam with no damage. Granted, the game gave me that out, I recognized that wholeheartedly, but the scoreboard still read out as a one run lead that I could and did get back on some small ball. My problem was, I wanted those extra bases. A two out double from Headley in the six would have been a huge rally boost to an obvious push inning designed to just scratch across a tie and run. Hell, I might have gotten ballsy and sent the runner from first to home on the hit just to test those young arms out there. Sadly, I could only pepper in singles. Any hope of a good stroke was dashed thanks to either my poor timing or just not scoring his floating pitches properly. The only solid thing I had going for me all game long, I was able to push his pitch count by taking some really good looks and following away some really tough pitches that might have put me away. Defensively, I was working fast counts by just pitching to contact rather than trying for the strikeout. I wanted my fielding behind Richard to carry the bulk of the workload and it worked out well. My only blemish on the day being that hanging curveball that JD Martinez served up towards the Crawford boxes. Still no confirmation if it hit that or not. So I kept the game tight with pitching while my offense just struggled. Almost like Rihanna in the passenger seat. Too soon? Eh. Fuck it, the jokes are back on because she went back to him. So where was I in this gameplay? Oh right, we're inching closer to that ninth inning and we're still knotted up at one apiece. I'm still looking for small ball fundamentals to pull out the victory while Monkey Master still has the option to power his way to another first and third no out situation that I may not be able to overcome. It's certainly getting late in this one as I am finally starting to strike myself out, looking to avoid being in the position of the walk off. Yeah, he was getting better placements and his pitch selection improved to earn those K's, but honestly, I was getting eager to do anything on offense. I was mounting the tension on myself, almost like all of those virgin male leads I see in the deranged hentai I've been reading as of late. Wait, why am I sharing that tidbit with you all? Ah, fuck it. The cat's out of the bag now. Just be sure to enjoy that mental image of me hunched over my keyboard reading poorly transcribed manga dicks and tits. But the thing that's been killing me throughout this game is that I really have to find ways to move my runners over, and typically it was through sacrifice hits. Granted, most of the runners I've gotten on have typically been before Clayton Richard, my pitcher, would take to the batter's box. So I was constantly in position to have to sacrifice the runner over to avoid just grounding into a double play. 
I didn't adopt the strategy of trying to steal bases until the 8th inning, and even then, I wasn't picking my spots well enough to avoid really bad throwout situations. So in essence, I was running myself off the field with my own poor decision making. Whatever the hell I was thinking trying to send Chris DeNorfia to steal second with Chase Headley at the plate is beyond me. Perhaps I was high on bath salts. Hell, sending DeNorfia to run period is insane. I should be locked up. Again. So my offensive woes continued, and with my growing impatience to figure out a way to get it started, I was practically beating myself. Not something you want to do when you're facing off against a competent opponent. So with one last shot to start up anything on the offensive side of the ball, I battled as best I could with Yonder Alonso, who I really hoped had one power swing left in him to find the cheap seats. No such luck, as once again, I strike out thanks in large part to my impatience and his improvements. Time to stave off some last inning heroics. We start off with a loud out from Carlos Lee who misses a home run by about 8 feet to his left in what was an obvious butthole tightening moment of the game for me. I already knew the game owed him that run back, but I certainly didn't want to give it back to Lee on a walk off shot. Mercifully for me, I continued to roll out fire and end his bid for a victory in the ninth by placing up an important goose egg. On to free baseball folks! Extra innings are on! X certainly gonna give it to ya. So the pitching duel continues into extra frames, but Wani would get the hook thanks to my patience at the plate to ramp up his pitch count. Richard, I felt, was still strong enough to continue well beyond the ninth as he never broke beyond 70 pitches. But even with new frames, I continue to struggle offensively. <sighs> yeah, anyone remember that quadriplegic joke I made in one of my previous blacktop videos? Yeah, it's gonna apply here. Like watching two quadriplegics trying to fuck. Great. Now I'm giving you mental images of sticky nubs flinging about frantically trying to stimulate sexual arousal. What's next? I kept off this video with clips from a snuff film? Is there an end in sight to my madness? There to glove it for the out. And we're going to see Martinez here. And a he swings on a towering fly ball. Is it enough? Deep into right center field. At the wall. Goodbye. Home run. He did it. Well, the hometown fans going home in celebratory fashion, Gary, as they win this one in the final inning, getting it done in an unbelievable game. Well, Monkey Master just bent me over the kitchen counter and asked if I wanted my insides tenderized with the rolling pin without lubrication. A hanging curveball to J.D. Martinez again kills me, and this game and video are now over. You all can piss right the fuck off while I go drown my sorrows in some Jack Daniels. Maybe I'll see you guys around. I don't know. This was depressing to live through again. <laughs>